Hey Andrew, why won't you answer my question? Okay, we get hundreds of questions every week by email, SMS, phone call, social media, YouTube, etc. And they are simple questions. Um, what projector should I buy? What screen should I buy? Where should I sit? Blah, blah, blah. And often people get upset with me because I can't answer your question. I'm sorry. Um, and that's not me being difficult. And let me explain why this is the case. So let's take uh, one question I see a lot. And I see this in a lot of forums. It's like, yeah, huge screen, bro. Go wall to wall. All right. So someone writes in and says, uh, can I go to a much bigger screen? Can I go wall to wall? Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to count down. I'm going to see if I can keep count of this because I'm going to do it on my fingers. Um, the impact of doing that. So number one is if you go wall to wall and we're assuming parallel walls, then you are going to create lighted hotspots on the walls that's going to act as a distracting exit door effect. So you're going to reduce your willing suspension of disbelief. It's going to detract from the experience. Two, that light is going to reflect from the side walls onto the screen, reducing your black levels and also creating a lighter area on the screen. So it's going to reduce picture quality. Three, you're going to create more ambient light in the room. Um, so you're going to raise ambient light levels. Four, you're also going to do the same with the ceiling. So you're also going to crush black levels at the top and a more reflected light on the screen. Five, um, Let's see. Oh, because you've got a bigger screen um, with the same projector, that means you've got actual less light on the screen um, because of the increased area overall. Um, so less light per area, uh, which means you've ruined your dynamic range. Uh, six, uh, you may have changed your throw ratio now, which means you've got to move your projector. And if you have to move your projector, then you may need to re um, uh, relocate your cabling. So uh, relocating your cable would be uh, seven. Um, if your screen is big enough and you've made a significant enough change, you've probably got to move your seats backwards. Um, so that's moving your seats backwards. So that's eight. <clears throat> um, if you've moved your seat backward, now you've got to move your left and right surrounds. So moving your left and right surrounds. If you've moved backwards, then you may need to change the angle of your rear surrounds. So that's ten. Um, whew, uh, if your screen has got wider, then it's probably got taller, which means you then need to move your speakers up in the screen a little bit to put them in the right area. I think that's 11. I'm just going to write that down. Um, what else? Uh, look, I think that will do. The point is um, there are 11 things to consider that I can think of off the top of my head in just changing your screen size, especially going wall to wall, right? So if you ask me, can I change my screen size? Well, of course you can, but is it going to give you an optimal experience? So, so th these are the things. I mean, here's a crazy thought, right? Have you stopped to consider that your choice of amplifier is going to affect your screen size? What? Like what? Really? Of course. If you have an amplifier of a certain capability and you're using that so on your LCRs, well, that means you're not going to get reference level at your seats. So you might want to sit closer to the screen. Well, if you're going to sit closer to the screen, what does that mean? Well, that probably means you need to adjust your viewing angle, which means you possibly want a smaller screen. It will still look as big because you're going to sit closer to it. But then you've got other factors that will then impact the material on your screen and so on and so forth. All of these decisions have to be considered. I bet most of you have never even thought about the fact that your amplifier sizes might <laughs> determine your screen size. It's crazy, huh? But it's true. OK, so this is why room design for us is so damned important. Um, we take hours and hours and hours and hours to do a room design and we go over so many iterations. What have we changed? What has that impacted? If you think about this, and here's a bit of a plug for us, but at the end of the day, room design is going to be one of the cheaper components in your room. And yet is the one single component that makes all the other components work at their very, very best. No other component does that. Right. You know, you have to think of room design, whether you get it done by us or you do it yourself, but you have to think of room design as a critical component of your home theatre. And then you have to think about every component in that room and how it's interrelated. So, you know, I, I hope that helps. Now, the thing is, what I'm trying to say is we genuinely want to help 
everybody, regardless of your budget, regardless of your equipment. That is our intention. So we create the YouTube channel for free for that. On that note, very quickly, I would say this. I hate YouTube ads. What I would really love to do is get rid of YouTube ads off our channel. Um, we have 15,100 subscribers. I would appeal to you, please, if you get anything out of our videos at all, please join our Patreon um, and become a Patreon member. You'll get access to our monthly video call. We've got another one coming up. I think I've gone a bit over the month, but I'm working on that. Um, and you'll have a chance to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with myself and, and Enzo if he's here or if we've got any special guests. And um, you also get to hear conversations with other Patreon members and we all have a learning session. And that, that's absolutely you know free. It's included in your Patreon membership, which is pretty cool. Uh, so for, you know, depending on where you buy a coffee, it's for about the cost of a coffee a month, um, then we can make a YouTube ad free and we can get you more and more information and also that's going to help fund more and more videos and also if we can get enough patreons on we can start to buy equipment test it and give it away which i really like the idea of but we're going to need a lot of patreons to do that but if you want free equipment that's going to help us kind of achieve that that's going to be amazing um i, I can't think of anything better there's a lot of you out there i would love to be able to give equipment to so uh, you know maybe we can fund that through patreon anyway my point is this, um, there are many, many avenues of knowledge. You can do the training I did, you know, go off and do your ISF, your HIA, your THX, read and study the books like Sound Reproduction and um, oh, F. Out and Everest's book, which I can't remember the name of at the moment, I'll put it in the description. Um, do your homework, do your study, and then learn to design your own room. That's the first thing. Watch all the YouTube videos, watch all of them and um you know we try in our channel to make them as accurate and as uh, correct as possible um so hopefully they're a good resource um and then ultimately th the next step is to engage a professional uh engaging a professional is you know it costs money granted i understand that but you're taking a lot of technical knowledge and a lot of wisdom um and you're getting someone who's going to bring all of those things together and they are going to consider all of those questions, all of those outcomes that we listed, for example, on, you know, amplifier or screen size or, or, or seating position or speaker locations. All of that's going to get brought together. And that's the difference between putting a bunch of components in a room and making everything work to perfection. It's, you know, for anyone who's sat and listened, for example, to our room one, yes, it's got some expensive gear in it. I, I, I get that. But that's not the key. The key is the effort that's gone in to making that room work properly. Well, the best equipment in the world doesn't work well if it's not integrated properly. So, you know, uh, just having expensive gear is not a solution, all right? It's the knowledge and the planning that goes into putting it together, all right? So, if from now on I don't answer your questions, it's not me being rude, it's not me being difficult, it's not me being I don't know, whatever, you know, oh, you won't pay me, so I won't talk to you. That's not the case. I don't know the answers. If I don't know and have all the information, I can't help you. And generally, the time it takes to answer that one question is more time than I've got available. Um, so, you know, please use the free resources or you can also contact us and you, you can take an hour, you can block out an hour of our time. And we do charge for that, but then you can sit and talk to me, you know, for an hour and, and we can help you through that particular problem perhaps. Um, or the best thing as always is just to get a proper, proper room design done. If you're gonna spend a few thousand on speakers, a few thousand on amplifiers or processors or projectors, then invest in a room design. It's gonna be the one thing that's going to make an outstanding difference between your room being, I don't know, um, making picture and sound and being a stunning experience. So I apologize to all of those who might have been offended if I haven't answered your questions. I hope now I've explained why I haven't been able to answer those questions. And I hope I've given you some insight into the complexity of those questions. And, you know, I, I think it's a really cool thing. You know, a lot of people, I, I like that idea of, how can an amplifier possibly determine my screen size? But it does, right? And and that's kind of a wake up call. I think it makes people sit back and go, oh, wow, I, you know, I never really thought about that. Okay, so there you go, folks. Um, I, I don't know, that was a rant. It's, but it's by way of an explanation as to why I can't answer a, a lot of the questions that come in. 
and I, I, I wish I could. There's nothing I'd like more to do, but I just need, you know, it would take so long because we'd have to garnish, you know, all of this information to be able to provide you the accurate um, answers that you want. And we just don't have, have that time. Okay, so there you go. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you understand. I hope this is sort of set off a light bulb moment for you and that you start again to understand some of the complexities in taking a home theater and taking it from a bunch of products to an amazing experience. And that's what it should be. It should be an incredible experience and something you enjoy, you know, on a daily basis and that really gives you an emotional impact and something that you're absolutely going to love. So uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.